Okay, so I welcome you all to my presentation. So my name is Dori van Erle, and today I will talk to you about my project concerning the aerodynamic characterization of futuristic spaceships. As you can already see on this image, you probably already have an idea what is it what it is about. I basically conducted aerodynamic studies with the KaleidoSim software. So my presentation is structured as follows. First of all, I will give a brief introduction. Then I will talk about the task which I executed. Then I will talk about the final product which I created. And then I will briefly explain how it all works. Then I will show the brief workflow, how you set up the case, how you type in the parameters in KaleidoSim, and how you post-process it. And then I will give a brief conclusion at the end, followed by some room for questions. So, as you all know, we, the KaleidoSim software allows to run multiple open form simulations in parallel, and at the Zeta we already used it in the past, mainly for the rotation of the motorbike tutorial around 360 degrees. And the goal of my project was to imitate this 360 rotation and to execute a more detailed aerodynamic analysis of different aircrafts. So we wanted basically to make an, an analysis with a rotation around the z-axis like this, but also with the ro rotation around the y-axis like this. So in my project, I basically executed four tasks. First of all, I made imitated the rotation around 360 degrees, which you can see here at the top. And here you can see I exchanged the mesh of the motorbike with a spaceship. And I also used the same method as before, where I rotated the wind channel. This was basically just me getting familiar with the open form and the KaleidoSim software. In the next step, I rotated the mesh around two angles, which you can uh, I and you can see here, here I rotated also the wind channel like this and this. And there is some disadvantage to this method because since the wind channel is rotating, the slice isn't in the same, isn't showing the same direction as the wind vectors, since the slice is in the, showing the same direction as the mesh here. And yeah, in order to fix this, I made a third attempt which was the rotation around two angles with a rotating model, as you can see here. So instead of the wind channel rotating, I'm actually rotating the model itself. And with this, this problem is solved and it's showing in the same direction. And in these two cases, I should also probably mention that I made it possible that you can iterate through multiple meshes in these cases. So I used three meshes in this case and two in this. And this was all done in the same kaleidoscope software, which I could post process afterwards. And at the end, I filmed a brief tutorial video concerning a case, which was actually this one. And this case is actually also my final product. So to my final product, as you can see, I conducted an aerodynamic study with two fighting jets, and they are rotated from, from, the, from around the y-axis and then afterwards around the z-axis as well. And this is a total of 420 cases that you can see. It goes on around 45 angles, and I iterate through different meshes, and I used a pretty efficient post-process with my Python script. I also plotted this data and wrote a CSV file, and all in all, from the, from the time I started the simulation until I have everything analyzed, it took me around 45 minutes. And this was while I was filming a tutorial and explaining everything. So now I would like to briefly explain how it works. So I basically have three variables which I iterate through with KaleidoSim, which is the mesh variable. This is the index for the mesh that is to be used for the simulation. It starts at zero and goes to the number of models minus one. And then the V variable, which is the rotation around the z-axis like this, and alpha, which is the rotation around the y-axis like this. And in and for all it to all it, for all that it all works, I basically run four Python scripts, which is Mesh Iterator, Mesh Optimizer, Data Collector, and Area Length Finder. So these two basically made it possible that the right mesh is used in the simulation. Data Collector writes a basic data file, which is important for the post process when we create the CSV file. And Area Length Finder is used so that the specific and uh, projected area and the reference length is calculated for each, each model. So the basic workflow is as followed. In my constant folder, I created this folder called meshes. 
and you would store all your models in here. It can either be STL or object. And then if it's necessary, you would have to add it the windshield size and initials condition. Then you can just compress it. So basically everything is mostly set. Then you can already go over to Kaleidosim. And I think you all know the process. Basically, you need to create a kaleidoscope project, enter the variables, choose a solver, choose your computation resource, upload the case, edit the run script, and create and run the simulation. So I give you a quick overview here. So it's a kaleidoscope software with open from 1912. And as you can see here, I have the variables here. So here I have my VASH variable and here the path to it. And it starts from zero and ends at one. Like I said, I have two meshes. It goes from zero to number of meshes minus one. And they make it in two steps. And yeah, the V value, which is around the set axis from zero to 45 in 10 steps. And the off value from minus 15 to 45 in 21 steps. I chose the simple forms solver and I chose four virtual CPUs. Here you can basically choose how, how much you want. And then I uploaded my case down here, which you can't really see, but I think it's obvious. And then I edited the all run script. I chose the virtual core and I made the command point slash all run. And it's basically all included in my all run script. And so it's pretty simple. Yeah, and from here out, you basically just create this project and it takes a while to upload everything and then then you can start the simulation. I won't really talk about this because I think it's pretty obvious what will be happening. So I would like to skip to the post process when the finished simulation is finished. So in the post process, you can then download your case files. So here it's important that you should use the download files by extension methods. This allows that you download files with the common ending. And the endings that I need, the extensions that I need here are .txt for the data.txt file, which includes important data for the CSV. Point simple form, they include the CD and CL coefficients. And point PNG, they have the images and with them I create a video. And after you've downloaded it, I basically execute three Python scripts, which is CD CL.py, which write the CSV file png to avi.py, which create a video, and Excel plotter, which takes the data from the CSV file and plots them in Excel. So I actually would like to show you this because I have pre-prepared this a bit. So I change over to my virtual machine. As you can see here, I have here my case with the present. This is the presentation case, and here is the basic case with the initial condition and everything. And here is my post-processing case where I have all my CD, all my Python scripts. So, and when I go to my downloads folder, this, this is what you basically would have gotten if you download your case files. So you want to move this here or copy it here. And now I want to extract it here. So now that it's extracted, I don't need this zip folder anymore. I can open it up and you can see I have all the cases from this tutorial already. These are all the 420 cases and if you open one up you can see I have all this data with the log files, the screenshots and also this data file which I talked about earlier which includes important data for the CSV file. And yes, so basically then the next step would be that you run these files. To, uh, first you need to run cdcl.py. For this you go into the terminal. You need to move into the post process fo folder in here and you basically just Type Python and just a moment. EDCL.py and then you run it. Now it's run, and as you can see, it renamed all the folders and the numbers, so it gave an order and it wrote this CSV file at the end. Well, you have the CD and CL values, the V value, the alpha, and the mesh name. And then the next step would be to run the video. And this would be with the Python command Python png to avi. And this might now take a minute or two, but I can briefly explain how it basically works. So it takes basically the image out of each of these folders 
and it moves, it creates this image folder here at the end and it moves all the images there. So it's probably not finished yet, but you can already see what it's doing. And yeah, you have here the folder, everything. And this is basically the same video that I showed you on the slide on my final product. So just a quick checkup. So now it should be finished. Might It might be a bit risky to open it beforehand, but you will get the basic idea. And I think you already saw what it did. So the frame rate might be a bit off now. Yeah, uh, yeah, but basically it's just showing the rotation of each angle. It would be a bit smoother when it's calibrated right. So yeah, and it goes um, outwards even more and more. Uh, I probably started this a bit too early, if I'm honest. So I'm, I'm just going to quickly check back and see if it's now better. Mm. Yeah, anyway, you saw the video before and it's basically the same thing. And at the end, it changes to the other mesh where you can see the same thing. So the last thing that has to be done, in the post pressing tools would be to plot the data. For this, you would run this Excel plot the script. I actually don't have Excel installed on my virtual machine. So what I did, I send it over to my windows. So you here you can see I have my CSV script, which we created before. And I would just run this Excel plot the script. I use my ID of choice, but you can also use it with the terminal. So I just run it here. And now it's run and it has created this file Excel evaluation point XLS. And when you open it up, you can see there is a workbook for each different mesh and you can see the CD and CL values are plotted for each V value. So for each angle around the Z around the Z axis. So here it's zero, here it's five and those are the angle around the Y axis. So it goes from minus 15 to 45. And I have this for all from four from five from zero to 45. The same I have for the other one here. It's a bit cramped and this is mainly due to an error that occurred in the simulation where we have an exceptional high value here. But I mean, it's an Excel script. You can edit it all you want so that you have that, that you can analyze it better. And in addition to all this, I also create a workbook for each fee value. And there you can compare the two meshes. And yes, and you can do this with each single one. So now I would briefly like to jump back to my presentation. So to conclude everything you have seen, I was able to run and analyze 420 open form simulation in 45 minutes. And I think you've seen how efficient my, the post process can be because I just made it in a few minutes that I plotted everything. And I want to say that Kaleidosim is a very powerful tool with a big potential if used right. And I'm very happy to tell you that I will continue this project in form of my bachelor thesis. In the end, I want to thank Gernot Boyger and the team for Kaleidosim for all the help that was provided in this project. And we would now have some room open, open for questions. Absolutely great. Thank you very much, Dario. I really only have very few questions because I obviously have been with you throughout yeah. the past 14 weeks. And right now there's no other audience present. Um, all right, so my, my questions, my questions go more towards um, the customer side of, of things like at the status at the technological status we are at right now. Um, and the customer would want to make use of the stuff you developed. OK? Yes. What would they need for it and how would you provide it to them? Basically, they would need just to okay, basically they would just need one of these cases which I I have opened up so that you would have probably to provide it to them so that all the scripts are included. And if, or if, if they have this one, I mean, you could just upload it somewhere and then you could download it. And like I mentioned earlier, the actual interface in Kaleidosim is pretty simple. You don't have to do much itself. 
Mm. Uh, they would have to, if I understand you correctly, for the post processing, they would have Pyth have to have Python installed, right? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. And you would also look have to look that you have all the necessary models. I think so. XLSX writer is example one for the for the Excel sheet, and yeah. That this is of course something you have to look at, but when you're in Ubuntu, you basically have most of them, just a few, and it shouldn't be a too big of a problem. So at the status right now, people would need to install a couple of uh, Python sub packages, and yes. then also, uh, as you did in the command line, call a few, uh, if uh, well, a few scripts. Yes, yeah, the post process script. Yeah, they, there you have to do everything manually with executing the Python script in the post process as it is now. Cool.